Hey friends, happy Friday and welcome back. This week, I wanted to kind of show you an art project that I have done over the past maybe six months or so. Because I'm a procrastinator. It took me a little bit longer than <laughs> the average bear. <laughs> However, I think this project is super nice. I'm really proud of it and I made it with fabric because sometimes fabric isn't just sewing. Wow. So I wanted to share it with you. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it and how I did it? Ooh, yes, you do. Well, you got to stick around. And if you like some of the things that I post here, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Come back, you know, come back every other Friday, hang out with me, see what I'm doing over here because I love hanging out with you and I love doing all the creative things. Without further ado, I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. Come along, friends. Okay, I know you're super giddy Yay! about wanting to see this project that I made with fabric, and so am I. Here it is. Isn't it so beautiful? I just absolutely am in love with that wall. Now let me tell you, I sat down with my husband and I was like, husband? And he was like, yes. And I was like, that wall is awful. <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all have stairs in your home and the walls are really kind of awkward coming down the stairs. It's like this huge blank wall and I'm not sure what to put up there. Listen, I'm used to having a tiny home. We, this is like my first home with a second floor. So I didn't even know that was gonna be a place where I would have to put decor. Listen, most of my walls are empty. Decor is expensive. So I wanted to do this in a way that was affordable, but also kind of represented my funky, fun, and colorful style. So what I did is I contacted the Style Magnolia first, and I talked to Megan and I said, hey girl, Megan, I need some scraps. And she was like, what's up girl, I got your back. And she sent me some scraps. <laughs> I also talked to some of the admin there and some of the customers there on their buy sell trade group and I basically just put out like a request for scraps and I also of course I said that I would pay for them but a lot of people just sent me the scraps that they had and that was super nice of them thank you <laughs> it made my job a little bit easier now I started with all woven fabrics I used um, stretch woven, I used chalice, I used regular woven, I tried to use the canvas, but canvas fabric has sometimes this little like backing on it that's a little, I don't know, fuzzy, and it didn't really want to work for my project. Plus it was a bit stiff and it was kind of difficult to work with. I also had a little bit of difficulty with the stretch woven. I'm not sure uh, if it's the particular content of the stretch woven, but I really had a difficult time getting it to stick where I wanted it. So what I did is, and I'm gonna show you all of the stuff that I used to make those cute little tiles. I bought, <laughs> this one my daughter painted. I have a lot of these around the house that my daughter painted because I cannot do a single thing without my child being like, mama, what are you doing? I wanna do it too. I wanna do what you're doing. So <laughs> I gave her some paint and she painted this, but this is a little tiny canvas. And I bought like a ton of them at Michael's when they were on sale. Um, this one I think is a two by two inch. 
And I also have some rectangular ones. Uh, I have some smaller ones. Now this one is actually covered with rayon shallot. And you can see on the back, it's just a canvas. So basically I took blank canvases and for some of them I used Mod Podge and this is the satin water-based glue and I painted the canvas with Mod Podge and then I took a scrap of fabric and I basically just you know I used a brush you're gonna need a brush and I brushed each canvas with Mod Podge just a nice thin coat and then I kind of press it down with my hands and cut it to size on the back which you can see and I just folded it over, okay? Now, it, for a lot of these, I had to do a couple of layers because what I really wanted was to seal the fabric in and prevent it from yellowing, fraying, and I really wanted that sheen because it makes it look more like a tile than a piece of fabric at that point, and it's pretty durable. Another thing I could have done is I could have created these canvases on my own. I don't have time, I don't have the energy, or the need. But if you ever wanted to do it, feel free and share. I want to see it. Um, but that's what I did. Uh, there are a couple different types of glue that I used. The E6000 spray adhesive. Hated it. That stuff was awful and deserves to be in the naughty spot. It didn't stick. It didn't stick on any of my fabric and that hurt my feelings. I also tried fabric tack, hated it. That also went in the naughty spot. It did not stick to any of the fabrics with the canvas, especially, oh, itchy, itchy okay, especially my stretch woven, didn't work at all with stretch woven. So in the end with the stretch wovens, I absolutely had to use Spray adhesive. Now, <laughs> we gonna talk about how I should never use spray adhesive again because I had this stuff on everything. It was on my fingers, in my fingernails, on my hair. I had to use a giant piece of cardboard and cover the floor because this stuff just got everywhere. And, but the best thing about it is that it will stick anything like I literally was able to stick all the things with this stuff I loved it so these two this one is Elmer's all-purpose and this one is Loctite spray adhesive and somebody is texting me and is driving me crazy why am I popular right now I don't even have any friends except y'all turn off this phone okay I'm back <laughs> I had to turn my phone off because I'm like, why am I getting texts during my video? Don't they know I'm trying to be creative up in here? Okay, <laughs> so I used this spray glue and just basically sprayed the front, laid the fabric down and wrapped it around and then just trimmed it with my trusty little scissors. Beep, beep. And you're gonna wanna use like a tinier set of scissors uh, because the little crevices and nooks and crannies and things are difficult to get into if your fabric is just a little bit too big. So you can cut your squares first and then kind of wrap them around. It works either way. Oh, here's another one. Here's a little teeny, teeny, tiny one. Isn't that so cute? I didn't hang this one, but I plan to. Thumbtacks. This is what I used to actually hang these canvases. I had so many ideas for these canvases and they just didn't work out. I thought, okay, I can nail the canvases together and kind of have them all fit together in one flat kind of area. But then I realized that it was gonna be odd shaped because I used several different sizes of canvas and the dimensions would just not be fun. Like I wanted some to be uh, out and some to be a little bit further back and I wasn't able to achieve that by kind of nailing them together. I also used this Supple Max uh, monofilament cord or illusion cord because it's like clear. Here, let me pull some off for you. Now the size of this cord is 30 millimeter, 0 0.30 millimeters. So it's pretty strong. I can't break it. And also at the same time, it's thin enough to kind of be invisible when I was hanging these. So 
So basically all I did was take on the tack on the back and then I would hook the cord on just like that. And then I would pull it down to where I wanted it on the wall and then I would tie it. Once I tied it, I would hammer this tack all the way in because these push pins do not go all the way in with your fingers. You will have a sore thumb. <laughs> so then I did this, I hammered it in with a little rubber mallet thingy and it stayed hanging on the wall, just like this. Now the only thing about it is that these things like to spin and oh my goodness, do they? Every time I would hang one, if it would like drop too hard, like everything would go everywhere and I would have to take like a stick and like try to <laughs> put the tiles back where I wanted them. Uh, another thing I tried to do is I tried to put them in picture frames to kind of separate the picture frames and kind of make a little bit of a dimension there. And it didn't really work out. You know when you, I wanted to have that wedding dress moment. Uh, you know that stereotypical moment where it's the one. That's what I wanted. And I wasn't getting that. So I kept trying different ways to arrange the tiles and to hang them in a way that would make me kind of like go Because that's what you really want, right? You just want to go I did that, okay? So this was actually the way that it worked out for me. Um, I took a dowel and this is a, kind of like a metal dowel, like a really thin steel dowel. Uh, I just happen to have it laying around, but you can use a wood dowel. You can use a curtain rod even, cause they make some pretty snazzy ones nowadays. Yes, they do. You could use one of those. And I used a couple of these little question mark hooks <laughs> to hang it. I think I used three to hang that because it got really heavy and it started to kind of bow in the middle and you don't want that. Because once you have all these tiles hanging on this clearly invisible string, it's, it, you don't want it to fall. I did drop it once. <laughs> Initially, I hung all the tiles. I loved the way it looked. And then I picked it up and I tried to bring it upstairs to hang it on the wall. Big mistake. <laughs> they got all jumbled up together. It was just monofilament cord everywhere. I couldn't detangle them. My heart was broken. I was a little angry. There may have been some curses said in that moment. And maybe I imbibed a little bit of wine after that. And then I had to just cut all the strings off and rehang them again already on the wall. So right now they're on display the way that I want them and I am not moving them. I may climb up there to kind of clean them off a little bit, but um, that's it. And that's another reason why I sealed them because they would be easier to dust. What you don't want to hang is bare fabric and then you can't actually wash it. Like if you wash this, it's probably gonna fall apart. It, it's gonna fall apart. And nobody wants that, right? That was a lot of hard work. Because we want to display our art. So yeah, no, I'm super stoked about this and I'm very excited about the way it came out. Very easy project, a little bit of scrap fabric, some art tiles, a little bit of glue, a little bit of Mod Podge, some clear string, and a rod to hang it up. And you're all set to be a fabric artist. Yes! What do you think about that? Okay, so I hope you really liked what I made this week and what I brought to you this week because it took me forever to make that. Next time I have something else special for you and I can't wait for you to come hang out with me. I hope that you have been having wonderful weeks. I have been kind of doing my thing over here. Life has gotten a little bit lighter. I'm feeling a little bit happier and the spring is coming. And I love the spring. Yes, I do. <laughs> I can't wait to see you in two Fridays. If you have a moment, go ahead and check out some more of my videos. I have so many videos on the Ellie and Mac channel that you can go ahead and watch. Some of them are a little cheesy, some of them are a little corny, but they're all a little bit me. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for hanging out, friends. Sew all the things, make all the things. Bye.